Today I'm going to share a little bit about what I call sumi sketching uh, for all you nature journalers. And then of course my love of Japanese and Chinese art. So the reason I'm sharing the Japanese uh, artist Hokusai with you today is because his line work is so beautiful and he's a great mentor for sumi sketching. So what I'll be using today is a pencil, lead pencil. This is the twisty race. Um, a fountain pen or ink pen with a waterproof ink and then one of these brush pens which there's several out there um, and it looks like a sumi brush painting brush and it's got a fine tip and then it flares out to a little thickness perfect for taking along in the outdoors or sketching at home so this image is a print which is behind me from a new publication from the British Museum, Hoksai, the great picture book of everything. And you could just see his linear work is just beautiful with the mountain in the background and almost like the clouds and the moon, um, just beautiful. I often say in classes that one should look at prints to see how they use the linear work, even though it was carved. Now, this collection of prints were um, never used for prints, so it's a very special collection because often the prints were carved into the drawings, I should say, and then they weren't replaced. So in this whole book are uh, drawings of his that we're never going to print. So what I want to share with you is, you can see I kind of did a drawing of his two trees on the right of the picture using my brush pen. And then I used my fountain pen to create some of the small little drawings here and the textures and I'd probably go back in and I could do some more of the smaller textures. So let's go ahead and try this together. I'll post the image for you and I'm just working on one of my sketchbooks. It's a Stillman Burn sketchbook. And then I'm into kind of uh, circles right now, but feel free to mark a square, a rectangle, a triangle would be fun. And just to kind of have a boundary, you can also use some artist tape to block out the space that you want to work into. Kind of gives us a little bit of a boundary. So the first thing is to um, you know, for me right now, is I'm just going to block in very lightly the placement of these trees. And if you really wanted to do a nice study, you would just do a continuous line, blind or modified contour drawing. Now... Traditional sumi painters don't draw things in, but for sketching, I think sometimes it's a nice idea because of placement. So it's kind of fun to see um, what I'm looking right at right now is the negative space between the two trees, so the space that isn't the subject matter. Let's just kind of get that in. And then there's some space for some bushes around there. And then, of course, you can always ad lib whatever you're doing. So that just gives me a, a beginning point. 
kind of gets thinner up here. And I can always change that as I go around. So look at his calligraphic lines and the movement. So let's see if I can move this in just a little bit closer. I'm trying to use my left hand. It doesn't really help. Okay. So if I start up at the top and I use just the tip of my brush, notice I'm holding it more vertical. But there's he kind of has movement in his brush. And it kind of curves in and out. It's not a straight line. Um, not too much variation with his thickness or thinness, but it's just so subtle. He actually comes down here and it's actually a little bit thinner in the line. But go ahead and try this if you have it. Um, it's hard to use a micron or, I mean, if you have a micron brush, that's great. But just to use a regular pen marker that doesn't have the tip is really different. So with my upcoming class at UNF, um, we'll be drawing similar things, but with including not only trees, rocks, and mountainscapes. He's just a great reference, and I hope you'll check out some of his work online. Um, the Asian art, the traditional Asian art, and even the contemporary artists are just so in tune with nature that it's just so hard to resist looking at So he just has some beautiful movement, and if you want the finest line, just keep the brush straight with no pressure to practice. And of course you can improvise. Now after you practice this, maybe with paper, I'd encourage you to actually go outside and draw. So he's got this great texture going. And then I'm going to take my fountain pen, which on previous videos I've talked about the ink. So um, he uses a very fine line, and, and of course he was using a sumi brush which uh, there are different types of brushes. And when I teach sumi painting, we require it. But if you're out in the field, it's kind of hard to bring liquid ink. You could bring a stick and um, grind your own ink, which is lovely. So you want to be conscious of maybe some space um, these are almost like a pine needle technique. Um, and of course, when you're sketching, you don't have to make such perfect drawings. Um, if I was outside, I would be breathing in the air, listening to the birds, and observing. I'd be wondering, what am I seeing? What is that? I'd like to almost identify, if I could, what types of tree this is. It's probably some kind of pine, but if I look up at the top here, um, there's different sort of texture, so I'm not really sure. And what's wonderful about the techniques is they teach you how, how to use 
different lines besides cross hatching and hatching. Really fun to look at, really fun to draw. So for me, it's nice because I get to draw, I can paint and add a color to this. And I can, you know, fine line draw too. So it gives me a lot of variation and a lot of fun. So here I'm just paying attention to the space in between. I hope this exhibit comes to the U.S. Maybe in the future. And of course, since it's we're so spread out, who knows if it will be across the country um, to see it. But if you're in a city or an area that has a nice Asian collection, um, Boston, D.C., Minnesota, Chicago actually has some. That's where my love of Asian art began. So you can see it's it, it's not um, too rough. I love this little mountain behind it. So let's maybe we can include that a little bit. Um, just kind of looking at where it's starting. So different brushes have different fine points. And you can experiment with some of them. The one thing you want to pay attention to is that not all of these brush pens are waterproof. They might say water soluble, but it doesn't totally mean that they won't smear if you add water to them. So we can try it. Like I'm going to go back to my um, pen here. There's a lot of kind of dots here. Probably need both. We could do a two-handed method. But just really light dabs. And you could see that with a brush, he was able to have really light ink. And that's uh, watered-down Sumi ink, which is the blackest black ink. Um, be fun too. I think I have a gray brush too. Um, and if you have any sumi brushes, you can start with just sumi brushing. Um, if you're going to be inside, then I can just throw all these things in my bag and be prepared to draw whatever I see. But it's really fun to take the time. I'd suggest that you take a photograph of the trees or rocks that you, you know, want to draw and observe it. I just sit for a few minutes looking at what I see and the beauty of this is you can draw even one tree over and over again and maybe zoom in or zoom out with whatever you're seeing. So you can see where it's starting to get the texture. Um, he has a great line in here, which I don't have. And he has some of these, I want to say they're pine needles, but it might not make sense. So it might be some other kind of plant growing here. And make sure they're not too perfect, um, that they have some movement in them. You know, often we want to draw them exactly alike. There seems to be some light lines on this bigger tree, some texture. Kind of looking at the video to kind of see what you're seeing. But if you're in the local 
Jacksonville area in Florida, please check out the UNF uh, Ali Osher program. I'll be teaching um, an outdoor hike through the First Coast Cultural Center here. But um, if you just want a nature journal, that'd be great if you wanted to come out and check different things out. Uh, this one's going to be focused on the Sumi pen, or the brush pen they call them actually, and trees, mountains, um, and that. So here you have it. Um, let's see. It still seems a little wet. And then, of course, I might clean up some of my pencil marks and kind of have that. Now, with nature journaling, um, I've gotten curious about what type of tree this is. I would use the outside to describe what I'm seeing, what I'm curious about, and if I can identify his tree and what he created. So I hope you have fun with this. And um, I'll be posting it, obviously, on Facebook or YouTube. And let me know what you think, and stay tuned. I hope to have more of these out to help you get outside, help you observe and connect with nature. Have a great day. See Lane M. Bergstrom, an artist perspective.